Okay, I've watched this movie a few times to really gather my thoughts, and uh, I'm not sure. I have kind of mixed feelings on it, on if it saved the MCU. On the one hand, if we're looking at like how enjoyable it is as a movie, uh, I thought it was decent to great. Definitely like an entertaining movie. Uh, I really love like, the action scenes as well. Like, they didn't hold back on the R-rated sequences uh, with the action and stuff, and especially the fights with Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, the fan service was also kind of nice to see. I also liked how they tied it back a little bit to Loki season one, uh, and then, you know, just the continuity. And there were also some funny moments throughout. But on the other hand, if I'm looking at it from a writing perspective, I think this is one of the worst written Deadpool movies out of all the series. Um, like, the only reason this movie really works is because it takes Deadpool, a popular MC, a popular Marvel character, and then it uses his comedic element to allow him to interact with another popular character from the past. And then that allows for like a fun, fan service, nostalgic movie. And it just kind of baits in the audience. So, and then that does most of the pushing. So you don't really have to rely on plot or writing or anything else. So they just kind of all take a back seat. That way, just the fact that like you have, you see team up characters, like team ups between two major popular characters, uh, that does most of the pushing. And then you don't really have to do much else, um, I feel like. And besides, no one really watches Deadpool for the groundbreaking plot. It's no, it's no like Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of get it. But had this been like any other duo of characters, this movie would have probably bombed. Like if it had the same structure. And I think there's nothing for Marvel to actually implement from this movie's success. And that's kind of more of where my problem lies. There's probably like a majority of fans or people that you know had been screaming about the decline of the MCU after Endgame and after like the TV shows, and then you know they watch this movie. And then now they're like, oh yeah, Deadpool and Wolverine saved the MCU. But at the same time, it didn't really save the MCU because like, I think this movie does a great job of making the fans think that this is what they wanted, but it's not actually what they wanted. Because it has mostly everything that the fans have complained about post Endgame, which includes poorly written, bland villains, a bad generic plot, maybe a little bit rushed as well. And then high stakes that aren't really that high or dangerous and more. And what do you think a mega studio like Marvel or Disney, whichever one controls which, I guess, like Marvel would do, would take away from this movie's success? Would it be something like A, take more time with your releases and space it out more? Or B, prioritize good writing and then comes the enjoyability or fan service or whatever else? Or C, only put popular characters at the forefront of your movies because it turns out that the fans don't actually care about the plot or the writing. Uh, and then they're just here to have a fun, good time. And again, I want to state, like, I do understand that Deadpool is a comedic character, and no one watches Deadpool for the plot, like, that much anyway. But I feel like you can only make so many Deadpool movies like this before people start catching on to, like, the formula, and before, you know, the jokes start becoming stale, before enjoyment goes down, and then they start noticing how bad the plot actually is, and then before they don't actually get fan service from a sense of nostalgia because you keep on bringing these characters back. All you need to do is see the movie, like to see Chris Evans was there, again, you know, Blade, Elektra, uh, Gambit. Well, not Gambit, because he wasn't really there before, but, um, and then apparently RDJ was asked to come back, which just, like, kind of shows you the desperation for Marvel, in my opinion. Delving into the story, it picks up, it, like, it starts from, you know, it's pretty clear in the movie that Wade is retired from being Deadpool, and now he works as a car salesman, and he's retired from being Deadpool, and he more so wants to matter to his ex-girlfriend, I, I believe, and then on the day of his birthday party, TVA agents show up, capture him, take him to the TVA, and then we're introduced to this like new character named Paradox who explains that the anchor being of Deadpool's timeline, Logan, is dead. And basically an anchor being is someone who is so vital and important to their own respective timelines and universes that if they die, then the whole timeline will slowly wither away. And this is a process that normally takes like a thousand years, but Paradox wants to speed it up because he prefers the old ways of the TVA before Loki became the ruler, I'm pretty sure. And then basically he gives Deadpool the chance to like join the MCU, Earth-616, or remain in his own timeline and then be killed along with uh, everyone that he loves. And then obviously Deadpool, uh, you know, declines, and then he goes searching for an alternate Wolverine to replace Logan. And then we see some pretty cool cameos from, like, different versions of Wolverine, all played by Hugh Jackman. We see, like, a ver like a comic accurate 5'3 version. We see one with, like, no left hand. And then we see we see one played by Henry Cavill as well. And then we see one called Patch, I guess, so that's all I can remember from now. And then we end up with the version that we see in a movie, which is a Wolverine. So Deadpool finds him and then takes him back to the TVA. And then Paradox explains that this is a Wolverine that let down his entire universe. 
And I still don't even really get that part because I think all that happened in his universe is that the X-Men died. So I don't know how you let down a whole universe when, you know, it's also revealed in the movie that he has, the, the Avengers most likely exist on his timeline as well. So he didn't really let down the universe, but maybe his friends is uh, more so the way to go, to call it. And basically they all get sent to the void after Deadpool realizes that Paradox is working without his higher ups like permission. And one part I really loved was like the first fight between Deadpool and Wolverine. I just love the cinematography and like, you know, when Deadpool kicks the little slab on the ground and then kicks up his magazines for his pistols and then like Wolverine actually crawling like a Wolverine on the floor in the first fight. And then later on in the movie, like the, the fight that happens in the van, like even though they have super regeneration, it's just really cool seeing them using their powers and their, their like superhuman physique and like peak attributes and stuff like that so then we see a cameo of chris evans as human torch and i was kind of iffy on this like you know this one this this reappearance because i wish they kind of saved his cameo for like secret wars because he's most likely gonna appear in secret wars and it's i don't think it's gonna hold as much weight as it would have held if they didn't show him in deadpool and wolverine because now we most likely know he's gonna show up again along with uh, like a bunch of other nostalgic characters but they already showed him, so it's just gonna be like, ah, uh, I don't know. And like I said earlier, RDJ was apparently asked to come back for like a cameo, but I think he declined because he knew that he was gonna be coming back as Victor Von Doom later on in the MCU. So that's another thing I'm just throwing out there. But yeah, I think this makes it clear that like, you know, the, this was entirely a fan service movie. Uh, and to market it as the one that will save the MCU is a little bit wrong in my opinion, because it's not saving anything if Marvel isn't going to change anything about the movies coming after this. Then they're taken to Cassandra Nova, who is the twin sister of Charles Xavier from the X-Men. I think she's a character in the comics. Again, she was a very bland trash villain, in my opinion. She was just kind of there, and then she's really OP, but there's not much to her. But, you know, for the sake of the movie, whatever. And, yeah, I think she was sent there to avoid from birth, and then she just kind of set up shop there. And then later on, Elia from Loki Season 1, comes up to kill like a bunch of people. She just has henchmen working for her and then Deadpool and Wolverine. And then she kills Chris Evans' human torch, but she leaves Deadpool and Wolverine alive for the plot. And then Lyoth doesn't capture them in time and then they fly away somewhere else. Like I said earlier, the next big fight happens in like a Honda Odyssey. And again, I love the cinematography in that one. I don't know how they made it work, but like recording inside a van and then around the van was like really clever in my opinion. Eventually they both fight themselves asleep and then Someone comes in to drive the van to the Resistance lair. And then in the Resistance, it's a group of rebels consistent of Elektra, Blade, Gambit, and Laura or X-23 from Logan, I'm pretty sure. And I was at first, I was like, I mean, obviously I love the uh, cameo, I guess, but there's a little part of me that's like, Logan, like what he died fighting for. I mean, later in the movie, it's revealed that she did get to have a life, but she still ends up in the void for who knows how long. And that's just a little bit depressing, I guess. Anyway, long story short, they form this alliance and then they drive to uh, Cassandra's lair. And then they get out. There's this big action fight. And then they get Cassandra to send Deadpool and Wolverine back to Deadpool's Earth. And then everything is all fine until Cassandra appears after being backstabbed. And then she appears to like use this device called the Time Ripper to destroy all of reality again. And then to destroy every timeline in reality. And... As she's doing that, there's this, there's another big fight between like Deadpool variants against Deadpool and Wolverine. And I actually really did like the scene as well, especially with the Madonna like song in the background. And again, just more action. I actually like it, like John Wick, basically. But another minor problem that I had with this movie was shortly before the fight happens, Deadpool monologues about how the multiversal element is just kind of getting tiring and then they should stop it. And it's like, and it just kind of falls flat as this is a multiversal movie. So I don't know if it's one of those things where it's like, if you make fun of the thing you're doing, then it suddenly makes it okay. But like, but it makes it less funny because this doesn't really seem like a, it seems more of like desperation from Marvel than it is just a joke. And like, yes, it made a lot of money, but there's nothing from Marvel to learn from this, as I said earlier. And then secondly, again, the stakes are getting old now. The same multiverse is in danger or like multiple timelines is at risk. It's just, it's not, it doesn't really hold any much wait anymore but back to the plot after the Deadpool's fight Deadpool and Wolverine stop Cassandra from destroying all reality and then both of them return back to Deadpool's timeline because like Hunter B-15 allows Wade 
no, allows Logan, allows the other Wolverine to replace Logan as an anchor being in Deadpool's universe. And then that's basically how it ends. So at least it ends happily, which I'm happy with. It was a fun movie, but like this is more so like a, a critique or criticism towards Marvel, I guess, or the MCU. And what I assume their plans are in the future. And I hope it just kind of turns out well. But um, yeah, anyway, leave a comment down below what you thought about the movie or this video. Uh, leave a like, subscribe, and then you can follow me on the socials, link below. And yeah, that's it. Peace. God bless.